Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. My name is Coach Scott. I'll be your host today. Uh, I know it's been a while. It has been a while since we did a, uh, a solo podcast. We were doing them once every three days, and I think I haven't talked to you guys probably in about two weeks now. Ever since we did that Ordinary Marathon recap a few weeks ago, we did have the podcast with Eric Gelman. By the way, that podcast was amazing. Uh, Eric's podcast was incredible. If you haven't checked it out, take a look. Uh, have a listen on one of the on one of the podcasting aggregators, or check out our YouTube channel. Uh, we did the we did the interview on Zoom, so we have it up on on YouTube. Uh, what a ama- an amazing story, you know. Uh, setting he has a he has a nonprofit. He works with a nonprofit that set up a hospital in the poorest country in the hemisphere, Haiti. They literally built the hospital with their own hands, built the hospital, and now they're trying to uh, keep it operational. And so Eric, in order to raise money for the for their nonprofit, he is riding his bike next year from Miami to San Diego. An incredibly long trip he's going to be taking, but he's training for it now. And again, a great story. Check it out if you haven't done that already. Now, we... um. We haven't done a solo podcast in a while, like I said. Had been doing them three times, three days a week. I'm not going to apologize, by the way, for missing days. Uh, the one of my one of my pet peeves was always those bloggers that take days off and then they come back with the uh, "I'm sorry, I'm going to start writing again" blog, and it just nothing nothing frustrates me more than that. It's like just stop apologizing, just write or don't write. Uh, so with me. Video or don't video, podcast or don't podcast. We are podcasting now, and that's all that matters. Uh, I will, however, tell you the story. Tell you, I'll tell you why we haven't been uh, been on the air. Uh, for those of you guys who ride with us on Zwift on Thursday nights, you probably have the inside track on this one. We've talked about it in the podcast too. So if you listen to the podcast, you understand. Our Thursday night rides, we had been doing those rides and live streaming them for over a year, a long, long time. And I don't miss those rides. I love those rides. I love the group that we put together. We've we've built that up from literally uh, the first day that we did that ride. One person showed up, other than me. One, it was Mike Osborne. I remember he showed up. He doesn't even show up anymore, but he showed up that day. And uh, and we built it from there. And it built out really nicely. And I have a, a list of about eighty or ninety people that I invite to the uh, to the ride every Thursday night. And we have a core group that typically comes every week. And we have some others that you know come every other every every so often. They come in and check out whatever it may be. But the ride has really been great, and uh, and I love it. I, I spend a lot of time putting those trivia rides together. Uh, it's a lot of you know getting that trivia together. A lot of love, a lot of care, a lot of tenderness. <laughs> All right, maybe I'm going too far, uh, but a lot of I, I put a lot of you know effort into those, and so I don't want the group to just kind of um, dissipate. Now, what has happened in the last couple months or the last month or two is that I tried to I tried to put the ride together, and Zwift just wasn't connecting. I would can I would come on, I'd try to get into the ride, try to get into the world, and I would get this not responding message, and it wasn't the live stream because I was actually live streaming. Uh, I was live streaming the rejection. Like I was live streaming. I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that I was there. I was trying my best to get onto Zwift and it just wasn't letting me. And the funny thing was, was some days it would let me. Some days I would, uh, you know, or other times, other time frames during the day, I could get onto Zwift. But for whatever reason, when it was time for, you know, for Thursday Night Ride, it wouldn't let me. So, um, you know, like what happened, what happened since then? I, I, I took my computer, I took my laptop over time. I fed, I said to myself, you know what? I re- we really need to fix this. I really need to come up with a solution here. I can't let this ride just die. So I took the computer to the geeks. Um, <laughs> that sounded a little harsh. That sounded more harsh than I thought, but uh, there's a store here called go geeks. Um, so a self-described geek, I'm not, not insulting people, not insulting anyone, Took it to the geeks. There's self-described geeks, and they. T- <laughs> By the way, I totally recommend them. They were really good. They uh, they knew their stuff. And he asked me a few questions, and and you know basically asked me what I wanted to do with the laptop, and he asked me what I have been doing with the laptop, and I said, well, you know, we have two businesses here. We run two businesses, a lot of you know website work and stuff like that. We have our charity race that we run through there. Um, we have a video editing studio for our YouTube channel. We have a podcasting edit, so audio editing for our podcast, and uh, and I do live stream. I live stream our Zwift rides. And he said, well, no, no wonder, you know, you've had this computer three or four years and, uh, you know, I'm just bogging it down and I, it's a laptop. And apparently he's like, you know, you shouldn't really be, you shouldn't really be live streaming with a laptop. He's like, it's, it's just laptops are kind of meant to be mobile and, and not really bogged down with a whole lot of power. And 
you know, they could be, I guess. But I mean, obviously, this thing's working <laughs> to a certain degree. But I guess, you know, doing it over and over, just I, I'm overburdening this laptop with uh, with stuff, right? With stuff. So he kind of cleaned it out. They, they, they gave me a new hard drive. Um, and things have been working a little bit more consistently now that I've gotten it back. And, and we've been doing some Zwift rides. We did the USA Triathlon ride next week or last week. Sorry. Uh, the live stream on that actually, it did die. The live stream on that died halfway through. So, uh, a little frustrating there, but the Zwift didn't die and I was able to kind of keep the ride going. So Zwift has been holding up lately. We've done a couple of live streams since then. We've done, we've reinstated our 5 a.m. rides. We'll talk about that in a second. And, uh, you know, it just felt, uh, or just, I just feel, I feel a little bit more, a little bit more positive now. However, I am still running the laptop the same exact way. So it's like, I haven't learned my lesson. So I talked to the guy, I talked to the geek, head geek. He might not be the head geek. He's sub geek, <laughs> subservient geek to the head geek, um, boss geek. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> I spoke to him and I said, you know, what could I do about live? Stream? I want a live stream. I like the live stream. Um, what can I do? How, wh- you know, can you set me up or what, you know, what, what would it, what would it cost to kind of um, build build something that would be more reliable? And and they had experience with live streamers and they, you know, mo- mostly with video gamers. And I guess there's locally, there's a couple of them that are fairly popular that I didn't even know. And they had set up their systems. And the cost is astronomical. I mean, five digits, it's just, uh, you know, not including the comma either, five digits. Uh, so I, I don't have that kind of cash laying around. Maybe someday we're going to blow up the YouTube channel blows up and, uh, you know, and then I can lay down some cash for a system. But, um, you know, I need So I needed some kind of desktop that will be functional and a little more reliable than what I have now. And besides, you know, I carry that thing up and downstairs all like every day, up and down, up and down, up and down. And it's really not meant to do that. So, I mean, it is, it's a laptop, it's supposed to be mobile, but it's just, it's more annoying, I guess. That's what I meant to say. It's annoying for me to bring it up and bring it down and up and down, and up and down. Uh, it's frustrating. So we need to make a little bit of investment. Now, Steph and I've been talking about it and trying to figure out whether or not it's worth it, whether or not we should be live stream, whether or not, uh, you know, it makes sense to invest that money. And, um, you know, we were looking at it and, and it kind of, we were close, we were close. And then I remembered, uh, then I remembered we have, we have Patreon, we have Patreon. So I went over there and I looked and I said, you know, and I've been telling you guys this for a while as we, you know, you guys, you're, who have signed up as patrons over at patreon.com and your names are all at the end, at the end of the podcast on, you know, we, on the scroll. Um, you know, you guys pay for this podcast. You pay for our data hosting. You pay for our, our um, we have an audio filter. We put this through. You pay for that. You pay for it. There's a lot of little things that you guys pay for. And you've met, you know, now, now I don't, uh, it, it's not, the money's not out of my pocket anymore. It's, it's you guys uh, support us. And I love that. And I, and I thank you profusely for that. And, you know, not only do you pay for the podcast, but we're getting, we have a little bit more. We have a little bit more on top of that and adding that money into what we already had in our investable amount, it gave us enough. So we're going to go and do that. We're going to purchase an, a, a desktop computer for inside, for in the gym. Um, and we're going to put up, uh, you know, we're going to sort of create our own little video live streaming studio in there. So I no longer have to bring that unreliable laptop up and down and up and down. I will be doing that for a few weeks. Hopefully everything holds out and everything's good, but it'll be nice to kind of leave the laptop upstairs and plug it in and just, Hey, like, all right, that's my work computer. And down here, this is, uh, the live, the live stream. We have our own live stream set up. I'm, I'm anxious to get that undergo, uh, you know, undergoing that project started and get it going and, uh, and making sure everything's going to be a little bit tighter around here. It feels good. It feels good to evolve in a positive way, even though it's money out of your pocket and it's an investment, but it feels good that we're able to do that. And I want to thank all the, all the people who went over to uh, patreon.com slash ordinary marathoner and signed up to be patrons. It's really, it really, really helps. And it's, it's helping us in this situation. So thank you. You have, you have saved the Thursday night trivia ride. And I hope you guys come back this Thursday. We're going to be putting out the invite either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, and I hope, I hope you guys come back and join us. I'm, uh, you know, I've been worried sick that you guys aren't going to come back, but I know you guys are going to come back. I miss you. I miss you all. Uh, <laughs> so we will see. You. Um, you know, we were so coming off, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that you guys are going to come back to that Thursday night ride. I, I, you know, I, I love this group. I think this group is awesome. The ordinary marathon, the way you guys came together and, and, and did all that and supported one another, encouraged everyone to reach their goals was incredible. And watching Brian Yarbrough 
run like 250 miles in 10 days was just incredible. So, you know, the one thing that I've missed over the last couple of days, not having the laptop was uh, Team Ordinary. You guys send in, you know, I asked you to send in your races. If you're on Team Ordinary, if you're a member of Team Ordinary, I said, check out the race calendar, add your races to the race calendar. And when they come up, we will announce them on the podcast. Um, we did, I, you know, some of you guys did that. And I, I just updated the calendar this morning. So thank you for doing that. I don't believe that I missed anyone racing. We did have a couple people racing last week. Aaron Shepard did the uh, Route 66 Sprint Triathlon. Congratulations, Aaron, for finishing that one. Katie Mayo did the Newport 10 Miler. Uh, awesome job there, Katie. And Sherry Burton, uh, Sherry B from over on our, on our uh, Facebook page ran her first ever half marathon, uh, in-person half marathon. She's done, I guess she's done a 13.1 virtually or just on a regular weekend, but this was her first race, her first medal, you know, her first in-person medal uh, that she won for a half marathon. I think that's just an incredible thing. And congratulations, Sherry. I got to meet Sherry in person for the first time. Uh, I had seen her a few times. She runs in my neighborhood a lot. She's local to me. And she had won some things during the Ordinary Marathon. And I wanted to give them to her. And I didn't want to have to ship them because, God forbid, I spent five bucks. <laughs> I'm cheap. What can I say? I'm cheap. But uh, she she came by and I, I gave her the the things that she won for the ordinary marathon. And it was just nice to meet her. And, you know, we, me and Sherry have been talking on, on uh, Facebook for, for months. And I, there's been times when, you know, when you never, when you haven't met that person yet and you see someone, you think it's them. There was one time we saw her where I was pretty sure it was her and I waved and she waved back and she says, yeah, oh, that was you. She's like, I said, she's like, I was running. I said, oh, that person thinks I know them. So I better wave back. <laughs> and it was me. So uh, it was nice to meet her in person. And now, you know, the old put a face to the name, right? I hate that. I hate that. Oh, it's good to put a face to the name. I, uh, don't say that. Don't say that. Anyway, uh, I hate when people use that line. Anyway, it's like they have nothing else to say, right? It's, oh, it's good to put a face to a name. All right, move on. Um, but I wanted to say congratulations to you guys for getting those races done this past week. Uh, and if you, you know, if you if you're part of Team Ordinary, go to teamordinary.com, look at the race calendar, add your races to the uh, to the list. I, like I said, I updated them yesterday. And uh, if you don't know if you're on Team Ordinary, there's a list of the athletes. We have about 85, 90 athletes on Team Ordinary, officially on Team Ordinary. You can update your uh, athlete profile if you like. It just again, all this stuff goes to me, and I have to update it manually. So. Don't be afraid if you, you know, if you enter it and it doesn't change right away, it's not going to change unless I actually do the work behind the scenes. So I will do the work behind the scenes. Sometimes it takes a few days. All right. Uh, and if I missed anyone's race over the past couple of weeks, I, I do apologize. I didn't do it intentionally. It's just, we've had kind of like these computer issues and, and that's kind of what's been going on. Um, if you are not on Team Ordinary and you say, Hey, what is this Team Ordinary all about? Go to TeamOrdinary.com, register for the team. You get the hat, you get the shirt, you get the bag, uh, you get access to that race calendar, and you get your own profile page as well. And I love setting those things up. So uh, check it out. You know, we're not like a secret society. It's not like we, you know, you got to know the secret knock. It's not like, uh, thank you, sir, may I have another? No, no. I might be crossing the line a little bit. If you guys know your animal house. Anyway, um, getting things done this week. You know, I got to tell you, um, we have been, man, my training is off guys. My training is off. It's, uh, I, and, and it's sad. It's kind of sad because in March I was like peak bike. I think I did a, a, an FTP test and I had hit about, it was my highest number ever. It was like over 240 Watts, which was my highest number ever for an FTP. And, um, I'd started running and I got my 5k time was just, it was, uh, coming down like crazy. It was started at like 31 minutes. And in just a few weeks, I was down to like 25, 26 minutes for a 5k granted on the treadmill, but still it, it felt good. I had run in a long run of about 11 miles felt good. And, um, man, it's not like I've been doing nothing. I just, my training had felt a little off. I gained a little bit of weight. Uh, I haven't been on the bike as much as I had in the past. I did a few outdoor rides finally. I felt good about that. I did a lot of swimming. I've done some yoga and some strength training. I've started adding that stuff to uh, to the repertoire. I just haven't done as much biking. And then there was a couple weeks in there where I was very light on the run. And all of a sudden, I kind of like blinked and, and maybe I had three or four really light weeks and I feel like I'm set back like crazy. It's And it really, it's it's annoying and frustrating, but it's, the, you know, it is what it is. Now I have a half, a half iron 
Iron Man Muscle Man, 70.3. I think it's July 13th, somewhere around there, second week in July. So I got a month to train. I really got to put the pedal to the metal. And when I got the laptop back and I started thinking about it, you know, we were big on the 5 a.m. Warrior stuff. And I had a lot, I had, uh, you know, I was very strenuously promoting that 5 a.m. Warrior. Um, And I'm going to tell you the truth, guys, that, you know, we have been doing those workouts at 5 a.m., it's been hot and cold. We had a very big hot streak in the beginning, August, September, October. Didn't miss a day, Monday to Friday, every day, 5 a.m. Ron, Mike Romans, who was getting up at 4 a.m. Todd Seiden was there most days. Joe Caniano was there a lot towards the end. Um, those guys were there. We were all there at 5 a.m. getting those rides in, doing workout plans, training plans, all that good stuff. We were uh, on fire. We were on fire. After a while, though, you know, some people started missing some days here and there. We all started missing some days here and there. We thought, you know, maybe it would be better if we just did two days a week. And then the other days you can do other things like run or swim or whatever. Uh, Try to squeeze those things in. So we went away from the full day schedule and we went two days a week. And it was okay. Again, okay for a little while. And then people just started missing, missing here and there and then missing a lot. And for me, the last two or three months, it's missing a lot almost every day almost every day. And I did a podcast a few weeks ago. I talked about 5 a.m. Warriors and I still believe that. It's not that I don't believe that. I think if you can get up early and get that workout in, it's such it's so beneficial to training, number one. And, uh, and number two, it takes a warrior to do that. It takes mental strength to be able to roll out of bed. I mean, you're, I am so tired in the morning. It takes mental strength to be able to roll out of bed and not hit that snooze or not go back to sleep and decide, make that decision to get out of bed and get on that bike. Most of the time, it's still dark out. So I, I think it's, it, it is certainly deserves that moniker, Warrior. And I wanted it. And I want that for me. I want that for me and I want that option. I want to put that option there for my athletes as well, the athletes that I coach. And I'm going to give you a reason why. Well, there's multiple reasons why. Number number one is simple. I mean, look, I don't work nine to five. I don't have to be there. I can ride at 11 o'clock in the morning and that's no skin off my back. But what's that going to do for my athletes when they're at work? And the truth of the matter is most people have a nine to five and you can't do a lot of working out in the middle of the day. Some people can. You maybe get an hour for lunch and you can kind of hop down to a gym if you have a local gym and you can get some work done. But a lot of people can't, which means that leaves them one option. You either have, well, really two options. You either have to do it really early in the morning or really late at night. And for me, you know, it's nicer to get it early in the morning. You get it done in the morning, you feel good all day. You get it done at night, you have it kind of hanging over your head over all day, just wondering, all right, I got to get home, I got to get the workout in, and and God forbid you kind of trip up a little bit, you have no recourse, right? There's no other, there's no option B. It's it's bedtime. Um, whereas if you mess up in the morning, you have option B at night if you like. So, uh it also the second part of that was uh I don't know. I started, I've, I've had two weeks, right? I haven't had my laptop. So I've had two weeks to think about this. And I've been uh, sort of thinking about, I, I've been listening to a lot of like sort of, uh, you know, motiv- I would say motivational speakers. They're not really motivational speakers, but some of them are, I guess. Um, and thinking about like what I want to do for myself and for my coaching business and all that stuff. And it reminded me, you know, I thought about the 5 a.m. ride and I thought about how I've been missing it lately. And it reminded me a lot of, um, I, I coached, I coached high school football for one year, uh, at Dover Sherborne High School, Dover Sherborne High School in Massachusetts. And, uh, one of the greatest things I've ever done. It, it was certainly one of my, my most favorite experiences. And it's one of those things where I, th- I think back and I, I'm like, wow, I, I, I actually feel like I was good at it. And I felt like maybe, you know, that it's a kind of a weird thing because you're a high school coach, coach, you don't make a lot of money. It's not really a career path. Uh, it's not a, viol- you know, it's like one of those things where if, if my father, you know, if he was over my shoulder, he'd say, that is not a, you know, that is not a, that's not a career. It, you know, you don't make enough money. It's not a career. And it's, it wasn't, uh, but maybe it could have been, you know, had it, had it gone forward and, and I improve, improve, improve and things go forward and you make more money. That's the way the, the job works. But it's one of those things where I kind of, I wish I would have had more. I wish I had had more years to do it. And I wound up going back to work nine to five after that. And I could never get back and do it. But anyway, that's a side, that's, I'm, I'm veering off the subject. I tend to do that. Anyway, back to the subject. Uh, when I was coach, when I was a, a, a football coach during the football season, the baseball coach at the high school used to go to the track. And to be honest, I don't remember if he went every day or if he went three days a week or what, he would go to the track at 5am before school. 
and he would open the gate. And I don't know, you know, I, I was never there. I wasn't allowed to be there. I'll tell you why in a second, but I wasn't allowed to be there. And I don't know if he had a specific running program for these, for our players, but he had people come in and people work out and people, you know, run the track together. And it was kind of like a club of people, of athletes that would show up and run the track together and do whatever kind of exercise routine they were doing. And I thought, man, This guy's not getting paid anything extra to do this, to open the door at 5 a.m. for people to go out into the track and and run. He's not getting paid anything extra. He's not getting paid extra to to go there and, and, and supervise and make sure people are working hard and all that stuff. He's not doing that. He's doing it because he want he, he loves the kids and he wants them to achieve things and, and, and get and, and do well. And I thought about that. I thought, you know, someone who loves, who loves coaching that much. To be able to do that, to do that out of the kindness of their own heart, really, that's kind of like the person I want. I'd love to do some, do that for somebody. I would love to kind of open that gate for somebody. I would love to be, you know, I, I couldn't do it that year. The reason I couldn't do it is because when you were the football coach, if you, if I show up to something like that and the football players are out on the field, it counts as practice. And if it counts as practice, you only have a maximum number of hours you can practice. And then it becomes like some kind of, you know, you break rules. And the next thing you know, I'm wearing an orange jumpsuit and whatever. Uh, I don't look good in orange. Actually, I do. If you remember our orange shirt from Ordinary Marathon. Anyway, um, you get the point. So anyway, I would like to be that person that opens the gate at 5 a.m. And I think that the 5 a.m. ride is very similar to that. It is very similar to that. Um, you know, it just, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you guys that have those nine to fives, uh, that you don't, you know, you, especially if you don't think you can do it, especially if you're like, ah, I don't have time to wake up early. I don't have, I remember I had a doc, you know, I, I had a doctor who used, who used to ask me, um, my blood pressure was a little high. I was overweight. It's like seven years ago and, um, maybe eight years ago. And they said to me, well, how often do you work out? Uh, I said, I don't have time to work out my job. I'm tra- I'm commuting. I'm at work. I just don't have time. I don't, it, just, it wasn't even a thought. And she's like, well, what about early in the morning? I'm like, well, I already wake up at six o'clock. What about late at night? Well, I get home at six o'clock. I like to spend time with my family. And I thought about it and I'm like, you know, if I can wake up at five o'clock and I don't have that nine to five, then who, someone else who's sitting there in that exact same situation that I was in a few years ago and more than a few, you know, eight, nine years ago, whatever. Um, I know it's extending, right? It's, it's just like it was five, seven years now, it's eight, nine. Um, if I could do that for somebody, if I could be that conduit, if I could be that conduit where you say to yourself, hey, this guy here, he doesn't have to wake up at 5 a.m., but he's doing it. If he can do it, I can do it. And then you go and do it. That, that's that's a ride worth having, right? That is a ride worth starting and setting up and making available to anyone who's on Zwift who wants to get going and, and get moving and make sure that you get your rides in every day. Um, we are reverting back to the five-day-a-week system, Monday through Friday. Uh, we started this on Monday, and Ron and Tabby rode with me Monday. Kyle Lundquist uh, came along today. Uh, we had Elena F- uh, Fajaco. Come, I think I spelled it. I, I pronounced that right. Uh, she came to the, she came at the six o'clock ride. We said so we do a five a.m. and a six a.m. And sometimes we the, we do the six a.m. because some folks are uh, Central Time Zone. So that's actually that is your five a.m. So Mike Romans typically comes at five a.m. Except for for him, it's four a.m., which is incredible. I think that's amazing. So again, if we can be that conduit for you to get you up in the morning to get those workouts done. That's what I want to do. So the 5 a.m. ride is back open. And I think, you know, we had opened it. We tried to kind of reinstate the 5 a.m. a couple months ago and it didn't really work out. I got to tell you though, it didn't, that didn't, that felt like I was trying to paper over a problem. That felt like I was just trying to motivate myself to get it done. And it does take a warrior to wake up at 5 a.m. And I was trying to psych myself up to do it. It didn't really work out. But now that I'm taking it on as a frame of, the frame of mind is, um, that this is a conduit for people to join, a conduit for people to kind of, Say, all right, I can do it. I can add myself to that group. And you don't have to be fast. And you don't have to ride the whole hour. And you don't have to do the exact same training plans that we do. You can ride easy. That is fine. You're not going to get dropped. Everyone stays together. Uh, come along for the ride. Just uh, reach out to me. Let me know. We'll add you guys to the invite. We're going to live stream this thing uh, you know, as much as possible, too. Um, I know that Monday's live stream, I talked a lot. I was kind of like I was pretty psyched up for it. Yet today, I was a little, you know, talking a little bit less. I was really tired today. But I got up. I got up and we faced some challenges this week too. Uh, you know, on, uh, on Monday morning, um, really, I guess it was Sunday night. 
my two year old, she sleeps historically. She sleeps w- amazing. Ama- ever since she was born, she, the girl sleeps through the night. I am lucky. I get it. I am lucky. Uh, she sleeps till seven thirty, typically almost every day. For whatever reason, on Sunday night, this was like, this was like, uh, you know, this was like fate challenging me, right? This was like the fate challenging me. They, at, we went to bed about 10 and we started hearing her just kind of talking and the talking became crying and then the crying became screaming and it was like, okay, we got to go get her. So we picked her up and we brought her into the bed. We've only done that once before and that was when she had a, she was sick. So here we are, you know, it's 1130 and she won't go to sleep. She's doing yoga on the bed. She's rolling around. She's a terrible sleeper. She kicks you in the face. And uh, it was probably like one o'clock in the morning by the time she went, she went to bed. And I had my alarm set for 430. And I don't like, I don't like, you know, I don't necessarily trust myself to set my alarm for like 10 minutes before the ride. I want to give me some time. So I set it for 430. If I can, I get out of bed. So Monday, I got out of bed. I made coffee. I sat down. I read the news. I felt good. I got on the tread on the uh, the bike and I rode. This morning was a little different. It was a little tougher for whatever reason. I, I rolled out of bed with about twenty minutes to go. Uh, came downstairs, let the dog out, got on the bike and rode. Um, so yeah, it, you know, I'd, I'd like to kind of get up a little bit early and set myself up a little bit better, but. You know, I'm two for two and this feels like it feels like the beginning of something as opposed to the middle or recent, you know, it does. It feels like a completely new thing. And I like that because I feel like starting fresh, starting over uh, gives us a better chance to succeed. 5 a.m. Warriors, if you're out there and you're on Zwift, and some of you guys are, you know, Katie Mayo, she gets up at like 430 and she's after it. So um, I, you got to give it up for that, too. Anyway, um, that's all I got for you guys today. All right. Um, the other, oh, the, the lastly, we are, we, like I said, we had Eric Gelman on the podcast. And I got to tell you, when I had Eric on the podcast, it made me realize I like having guests on this show. Uh, I like other stories. I like getting people involved. And, uh, Eric's story was amazing. So we're going to start adding more guests to the show. Hopefully, my hope is that our new sort of format, I know I play with the format too, way too much, but our new format is we're going to do one solo podcast in the week and then another podcast in the week that will be, that will involve a guest. This week's guest is going to be Denny Cray. Den- we have Denny coming in on Thursday. Hopefully get a nice recorded podcast done. And then we'll have that out on Friday for you guys. I do not like, I'll tell you what I don't like. I don't like backing, like backlogging guests, like recording 10 podcasts at once and then waiting and just like dripping them out one at a time for three months. Um, I've been on the other end of that where I've been up uh, on a podcast, I guess in a podcast. And like after a couple months, I forget that I was even on it. And like three months later, I get a, I get an email saying, Hey, your podcast is live. It's like, well, what did I talk about? And half the things I talked about, uh, you know, they already happened. Something already happened. Like we're teasing something that already happened. So, um, it's a, you know, I don't like doing that to other people. So we're going to be doing it on a week by week situation. And if we don't, if we can, if we're unable to get a guest each week for whatever reason, uh, I'll do a second one. I'll do a second podcast. So that's, you know, we're going to this two podcast a week thing. Uh, I will continue to update you on training. I, like I said, I got a, I got a month to go, a little over a month to go for my next race. And, uh, you know, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Uh, that's all I got to you for you today. Again, thank you so much, patrons. Thank you, everyone who signed up on patreon.com slash ordinary marathon or to become a patron. Uh, you've really helped us out. It is going to fund all of our live, live streaming equipment. Uh, well, partially fund and it really kind of put us over the top. So thank you so much for that. You can go to patreon.com slash ordinary marathoner if you want to support the program. It really, really helps. So thank you so much. Uh, all of the patrons will be listed at the scroll in about three seconds after I let you know every day is an ordinary day unless you make it extraordinary. So get after it. <laughs>